How's it going? Good evening. It's Greg here, Fisherman's Headquarters, checking in with you guys. Say what's up. Try to share a little bit of information on this fine evening. Uh, so basically, I want to start off by letting everyone know that uh, the last time I jumped on a couple days ago, I went over some details, some things, went over some questions, um, a couple things I wanted to talk about. And um, I was kind of bummed out towards the end, I lost connection. So I'm trying to do this offline through my Wi-Fi uh, rather than through my data. So hopefully this works out better. Um, I'm also going to try to jump in again with a guest. Uh, the last time we did this, uh, someone jumped on and, and commented that they would like to see or talk with Dante from Magic Tales. Anybody who doesn't know who Dante is, uh, he's a great lore maker. Uh, small company right here next to where we are here in Central Jersey. Um, Dante is a longtime uh, friend. He's a longtime saltwater angler, uh, very experienced from light tackle to offshore and kind of everywhere in between. Um, so I'll start off with saying that, uh, I got a couple things to just kind of poke over. Um, but basically I've got a lot of questions that people sent in from the post that I put up earlier today. Uh, I don't think I'll get it to all of them. So maybe I'll send some of those either direct replies or maybe a screenshot and we'll post those um, to the story in, in some sort of fashion or if there's time towards the end, I'll do that. Uh, just to let you guys know, I am putting these, trying to whenever I can save them and Instagram works correctly, uh, save them and throw them onto YouTube so you can kind of follow along or if you miss something, you can check something out. Um, so just to start things off, uh, like I said, last time I was talking, um, there was a couple questions about lures and someone asked me, you know, if you had to have only three lures, what would it be? And I said it was going to be a bucktail. Uh, I said it'd be an SP minnow and I said it would be a super strike popper, a uh, little neck popper. And I kind of explained about why uh, a couple little pieces here and there. I spent most of that time talking about the Little Neck Popper, uh, which has been very good to me. So maybe you saw that video, maybe you, you witnessed it, you got it. Um, as soon as it was published or uh, it ended, it would not publish. There was an error, like I mentioned before, and I also couldn't save it. So if you're on it, great. You got a couple, you know, hopefully a couple tips. Um, if you already knew all the stuff, awesome. Um, you're ahead of the game. For anybody who didn't, get it, you missed out, sorry. Uh, maybe I'll talk about the Super Strike Popper another time. But what I wanted to really talk about was bucktails. Um, bucktails are very, very effective lures. Um, they, they cover so many different bases, whether it's uh, still water, uh, shallow water, not really the best uh, use for bucktails, but you can fish a small bucktail in, in some shallow, slow, slow moving water. Uh, but they really, really uh, effectively uh, outproduce a lot of other lures in deeper water, uh, sometimes when the fish are hanging in the middle of the water column or towards the lower uh, section of the water column, along bottom sometimes, hunker down and tight in sort of a lethargic state. Uh, sometimes a bucktail kind of bounced along bottom can, can spark a little interest. Um, that being said, bucktails work great from land. They work great from uh, the beach, say banks, say sod banks. Um, they work awesome off of docks and bridges, whether you're fishing the side, say dock or bulkhead, or if you're fishing vertically off the top. Um, they're very, very effective in the boats, in kayaks. And um, basically, if you don't know much about bucktails, uh, you, you, you should, I suggest you should try to sharpen your bucktail game. Um, there's a couple ways to do that, and it's basically getting a couple, because they're affordable lures, and fishing them, spending time. Uh, it's the only way, any, only way to really learn anything is, is to spend a little time, get a little experience, um, kind of get your feet wet with it, and um, you know, see what you can do, see what kind of productivity you can put together. Uh, another way is to try to listen to other people that have spent a lot of time fishing them, and that's one of the ways I learned and, and jump-started into bucktail fishing a long, long time ago. I uh, learned some, from some old-time Sharpies, uh, some guys that were just die-hard bucktailers. Um, that being said, I spent a lot of time fishing bucktails almost at all my trips, all my charters, uh, whether I'm fun fishing or have paid clients, uh, bucktail is a very, very effective lure that I fish primarily every, every trip out. Um, primarily bluefish and striped bass and fluke. Uh, I'd say it's gonna be, you're gonna be pretty hard pressed to find one lure that's gonna work in a lot of different conditions all the time than a bucktail. Um, but now going more into bucktails, right? So I'm, I'm eventually hopefully gonna have Dante jump on and, and we could ask a few questions and things like that uh, to him if, if he wants to answer questions or a couple of things that I kind of wanted to reach out to him with. Um, but one of the things I wanna talk about is there's different bucktails, right? So, so customers sometimes will, will order online um, a couple things that might be, let's say, uh, light tackle oriented 
And then all of a sudden you see him get like a, a, a bullet head bucktail, which from, from Magic Tales has a really heavy hook. And I, I'll, I'll reach out with a, with, a, with a kind of a message or a phone call and say, hey, just making sure, are you trying to fish these kind of, these, this leader, these swivels, these clips at the same time or, or in conjunction with that bullet, you know, buck, buck, bucktail, that, that, that bullet um, style Magic Tail Lord? And most of the time they say, yeah, and, and I'm like, well, hey, here's the deal. You know, this is a super, super heavy hook for anybody who knows, a 3407 DT, it's a tuna hook. Um, it's not really going to work that well with 30 and 50 pound um, kind of class terminal tackle, say 30 pound fluorocarbon and a 30 or 50 pound clip, uh, say tackle angle or something like that. It just doesn't really go together. It's, it, it's, it's a really big lure and a, and a really light tackle. So I wanted to kind of pull a couple things out and start off by saying that um, – this is a teardrop bucktail from Dante at Magic Tales. It's probably the best teardrop or best shaped bucktail you can get for doing all sorts of things. Uh, striped bass, bluefish, you can clearly see bluefish destroy this thing, um, and fluke. It's got a very curved uh, hook. Uh, the shank is somewhat short, but it has a very, very uh, curved style of hook. And it's also a light wire hook, black nickel. Uh, these are great for fluke. Uh, has a nice little eyeball. If you notice, if you hang this, it's going to hang almost horizontal. Uh, and that's for a couple reasons. Um, that's for jigging. And um, it also presents much, much nicer in, in the water column as, it, as it's swinging by left to right. Um, some bucktails have a larger kind of nose on them. Maybe take a look at a Spro bucktail. Um, if they're fished off a rocky bottom... Uh, that that lip is kind of riding in front of the line tie, the eye, and it kind of get hung up. So if you're going to fish a rocky bottom or some some structure, um, some spots where you know there's some snags, I wouldn't suggest fishing a bucktail with a large nose or or, or kind of front cone shape, um, like the ultra minnow or like a guppy. Sometimes they call them or a uh, a spro. Um, something like this is going to help you out a little bit, also on the beach where it slides along. Uh, I can kind of come along. So if you're looking for a bucktail to fluke fish off the surf, Dante's, or I should say Magic Tails, um, Teardrop is a phenomenal choice. Um, if you're fishing some rocky uh, areas, these are great, but this light wire hook is not the best. Um, it's really, really good for light tackle fishing to get quick, easy hook, hook set penetration. Um, however, when you start getting these some bigger game and some kind of bigger tackle and some rougher kind of conditions and, and, and rougher snags and structure and such. Um, I really like to go up to a heavier hook and the heavier hook is going to be found on the smiling bill or sometimes they call them hot lips. Uh, this is definitely a medium to heavy duty bucktail that's going to cover almost all your bases. You'll see this hook here is nice and stout. Uh, it's forged. You see these flat sides. It's a mustad forged hook. Um, it's a jig hook, so you see it's got a 90 degree eye. Good size eye to get a clip onto or tie onto. Hopefully you can see that clearly. Uh, it also has this unique kind of smile and bill kind of lips that where it gets its name from. Um, but this is definitely a bucktail that I think everyone should have at all times. Um, if you fish for striped bass and you haven't fished a smiling bill, uh, you're definitely missing out. Where have you been? I'm not sure. But um, there's a lot of people that, that come in the shop all the time and ask about lures and ask about striped bass fishing and don't know much about bucktails. Um, so you're not going to learn everything from me. You're not going to learn everything from, say, your buddy. But I strongly suggest you try to get some intel. Uh, one place to look would be John Skinner. Uh, he wrote Fishing the Bucktail Book. Um, it's, it's a phenomenal resource. Some of his videos uh, cross-reference with that. Definitely check that out. Um, if you want, you want to get creative in this you know, time of quarantine, you, you want to try to stay busy at home. Um, I would strongly suggest learning to maybe make your own stuff. You can make your own teasers, make your own uh, bucktails. But if you don't want to and you want to just buy a top quality product that, that's, that's proven and done right, uh, Magic Tail would be the place to go. Definitely the best brand uh, bucktails that I think you can find in a variety of, of sizes and, and styles. Uh, we are fully stocked with Magic Tail products. We just got a huge delivery in. Um, and if you need something, just let us know. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention there are other options and bucktails. I want to get too kind of crazy with it all. Um, there is a style. This is a smaller weight in the style, but it, this is kind of like the diesel bullet head for Magic Tail. And um, 
I'm pulling back the hair just so you can kind of see it a little bit better in the camera. This is, I believe it's a three quarter, um, super, super diesel hook. Once again, it's a forged hook um, and it's got a brass eye. So it's very, very convenient to clip a tactile angler clip or any sort of quick, uh, convenient clip on it. it. Just kind of slides on, slides off. It's very, very helpful um, if you're gonna be fishing with gloves on when it's colder, um, but it doesn't really need to be, you know, just for that. It can be used around, you know, just about any time of the season, when it's, even when it's warm. So another thing is uh, what I do like to do with bucktails is I like to fish trailers. There was a long, long period of time where Uncle Josh made pork run. Um, they had some things that kind of took place in the pork industry and there were some shortages and long story short is they discontinued pork rind. So this isn't new news, but for people that may have, you know, want a little background on some classic bucktailing, pig and jig, as they refer to it, uh, the pig being the pork strip and the jig being the bucktail. Um, you know, those days are kind of long gone, but there's been a void that's been filled, or I should say V void has been filled by a couple companies. Otter Tails is one of them and Jig Strips is another one. So Jig Strips is personally my favorite. Uh, I mean, we sell both of them, but I really like the shapes and kind of the designs and colors and also the material that, that Jig Strips offers. Um, plus it's a great team. The, the two dudes there are great people and they've always, uh, you know, worked with us. They, they, they've spent a, a day at Surf Day, shared a booth with us and uh, helped promote their products. And they also sent us some uh, kind of freebies for the, for the guys at the shop to fish and, you know, when they come out with something new. Uh, this is one of their newer tails. I'm not saying it's the newest. I mean, this has been out for a couple of years, but this is uh, the eel tail. Uh, I really like it. It is basically a curly tail shape. Uh, I can fish them on bucktails from super small, say half ounce, all the way up to say three, four or five ounces. Um, I like to get the bigger one, the seven inch, and I trim it back if I ever need it to be shorter, uh, rather than buying the shorter one and one day meet, you know, maybe needing that length. Uh, I primarily fish white, red, and chartreuse. I really like to pull out chartreuse when you got dirty water. Um, white is kind of like an always a, a good choice. And red, I really, um, I'm, I'm going to opt for in low light situations. So if I'm just showing up somewhere in, the, in first light in the morning, more than likely I'm going to be fishing either a red bucktail and a white strip or a white bucktail and a red strip. Uh, I like to get that red color out there in the low light situations. Also fish them at night too. Uh, that being said, the yellow color is, is also one of my favorites. Um, I shouldn't say it's my top favorite, but I like this much, much better when there's certain baits around like spearing. Um, I just think that this really, sometimes of the year, certain days, even, uh, yellow seems to be, uh, something that fish key in on. There's some guys that like to fish a half and half white and yellow bucktail, which is kind of a classic color, not the most popular that you see all over the place, but it, to me, it's kind of one of my secret weapons. Um, if I don't have a yellow and white bucktail to fish a white strip on, I will just take a standard white bucktail such as this one and put a yellow strip on. This is a jig strip. Um, and this copies the once upon a time um, Uncle Josh's pork rind model 70. It's just a straight taper. Uh, definitely a really beautiful flapping bait. Um, one of the things I would like to say, yeah, absolutely. Shout out to, to Cedar Run Lord's Rick Lamb style. He loves white and yellow. It's actually um, just one of the people that really got me confident in it before I um, kind of was as confident as I am now with, with yellow. Um, Fly fishing with, with, with some spearing around also got me very confident with yellow, fishing uh, yellow and white clousers, which are basically a, a bucktail. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to mention is the bucktail weight is very important for conditions. And it also what is very important is the strip. Not all strips are the same. So there's a couple models. There's a fork tail. Uh, there's a straight taper like this one. There's an eel kind of tail, which is like this curly tail. Um, that being said, I also fished the old school curly tails too, they're very, very, very effective. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to kind of point at is these different tails affect how that bucktail will slide through, how it will penetrate into the water column, how it slides through the water column, uh, and also it, it affects how much resistance you have on your rod when you're retrieving. Um, one of the things that's very important with a bucktail is feel. Um, some people are used to fishing a swimming plug where you cast out and you start retrieving, you feel it thumping. Um, that is very easy to fish. You, you feel it or you don't feel it. If you don't feel it, 
catch your slack up, start cranking, and you start feeling it thumping and vibrating. And maybe you give it a twitch every once in a while, and that lure does its thing. It swims and it catches fish. Uh, poppers, you see them on top. You can pop, pop, pop. You can fish in slow and V-wake. And for the most part, you can see the, the popper swimming and a fish comes up on it and you're doing the right thing. Um, with a bucktail, because it's subsurface, you can't really see much. So you kind of have to be like the bucktail. You have to kind of think like a bucktail and say, if I'm driving this bucktail through the water, where am I right now? So you cast out, you get into the water calm. Are you at, at the top of the water calm? Are you just getting into kind of, if you're off the surf, just getting into the foamy water? Or are you almost about to hit the bottom? Are you about to snag up on some rocks or, or some debris, uh, a jetty, maybe something like that? Um, maybe you're fishing a bulkhead and you're trying to swing along. Maybe there's a dock that, that, that comes out and you're trying to kind of cast up above it and, and fish the rip or, or the light line and the shadow line that's off of that dock. You really got to think like a bucktail and say, for this weight, for this condition, uh, for this line that I'm using in this uh, strip, where is this bucktail right now in the water column? And where do I want it? Do I want it to swing down towards the bottom and just come up? Do I want it to swing through the middle? Do I want to be kind of up towards the top? And depending on where you want to be and where you think the fish are and where the fish are looking for, for bait, for, for, for forage, um, it's kind of where you need, you need to put it. And you can adjust these things by doing more than just changing the actual weight of the bucktail. You can change it by changing the, the trailer or the strip. Um, with that said, Sometimes you need a longer cast. You need weight to load a rod to punch out and do it into the surf. Uh, a common place where this happens is Montauk, hard northeast winds. You got a wind in your face. If you throw a one ounce bucktail, um, it's probably going to come, go out, come back and hit you in the face. Um, so what you need to do is you need to fish a powerful rod. Most of the time, uh, 10, 11 foot rods um, in the two to five ounce range. And you would fish a two ounce three ounce bucktail. You start fishing those big bomb bucktails, you can really punch them out. Now, you don't want to cast high because it's going to go out and catch the wind. You're going to kind of punch them almost sidearm or punch them very horizontal, like not, not in a vertical kind of arching fashion. Um, but then once it hits the water, you've got this big bucktail that just instantly sinks like a rock. So what do you do? And that's kind of where these strips come into play. Um, you can kind of fish a bigger strip or a smaller strip Get these and cut them with your pair of scissors, cut them with a, a, a plier, you know, the, the snips, the line cutter on your plier. Well, sometimes you can kind of manage cutting these out to shorten them up. Um, sometimes I'll take a scissor and I'll make a fork tail out of some of these wider ones, or you could just buy the fork tail model ones. Um, and what I'm trying to explain is that you can customize these strips and the combination of the strip and the jig to really work best for the applications that are at stake for you at that moment. Um, in a previous video, I talked a little about tide uh, and water movements and currents, and that really has a lot to do with your fishing session with a bucktail. So as that water is, is slowly creeping by or as it's cranking by, your demands are going to be different. So you're going to be fishing a heavier bucktail in the meat, you know, the heavy part of the current um, in that full flow, whether it's in or out. But when that water is really moving, you're going to fish a heavier bucktail. And when it slows down, that heavier bucktail is going to go right to the bottom. So you're either going to have to fish it much quicker or to slow down that presentation, you're going to go a lighter bucktail or a bigger strip or the combination of the two. Um, so hopefully that helps a little bit and kind of gives you some ideas on um, maybe if you haven't fished bucktails or maybe you only fished a couple or maybe you only own one or two, um, maybe you want to venture out and say, hey, maybe I need to see what this ounce and a quarter bucktail is all about, which is a very, very good size for me. Um, some people don't fish an ounce and a quarter. They stick to the half and one ounce, an ounce and a half. And that's cool. Those are, uh, those are good. But for me, uh, I'd say ounce and a quarter and ounce and a half are very, very good fishing, moving water, whether it's um, in the inlets, in, in, the, in the surf, in the ocean, um, in the back bay, most of the time it's one ounce and under. Uh, that five eighth size, that three quarter size, the half ounce size can be good when you have more uh, of a swift current. And those smaller, say three eighth, half ounce and under can be great when you want to have a smaller presentation, almost like a grass shrimp or a small minnow presentation in some slower water. Um, that being said, there's all different colors, all different sizes, all different shapes. Um, if you guys want to learn about bucktails, like I said, <clears throat> check out online. Uh, John Skinner is a great resource. If you got questions, I'd love to answer them. Um, giving a full lowdown 
on the uh, kind of how to's uh, kind of takes a lot of time. So all that being said, um, I'm hoping Dante from Magic Tales jumps on here. He told I, I asked him to jump on say 10 minutes after I started, so we're, we're past that. So maybe he's around, maybe he's not. Um, looks like Svet's cutting his hair. Oh, great, cool. So I guess he's getting a haircut, so maybe he's not joining us tonight. But that's all right. So we had a bunch of questions that people uh, message in. I really, really appreciate that. Um, the interaction between us, and when I say us, the shop, Fisherman's Headquarters, um, whether it's myself, uh, Willie, or Max, uh, those are really the three guys at the shop that have Instagram, the, the Instagram account. Um, just to lay that out there, we get messages all the time say, who the hell am I talking to? You know, I'm messaging, I'm, I call on the phone, I talk to somebody, I talk to him in, in person, but on, online I never who I'm talking to because it just comes back as the shop. So let you guys know that, you know, kind of people behind the screen um, is myself, my name's Greg. Uh, Max is actually on this chat right now on the comments, Max Bambera. Uh, he's the man, man that makes it all happen. Um, and also Willie, he, he's a great dude that's been working for us for a long time and he's a very experienced angler. Uh, he's also on on uh, Instagram and, and he helps out with questions and stuff like that. A lot of content. Um, so Shrag says he's taking bets on whether or not Dante is wearing a hat. Uh, who wants some action? <laughs> so I actually was gonna not wear a hat, but I had this wicked uh, receding hairline going and my hair was kind of already hat headed for the day because I had the hat on all day. So I wanted to rock the hat. Figured I'd give a little uh, little props to the shop. If anybody's looking for some fish heads gear, you want to join? You want to join Team uh, FHQ? Uh, we love to have you guys. Uh, we have these hats are great, um, great performance SPF fifty. We got them at the shop. I think they're twenty some bucks, twenty twenty two dollars. Check them out on our website. Uh, we can get you one out. Give us a little uh, little support, and we definitely love the photos from anglers that are rocking either fish head shirts, uh, fish heads hoodies, fish heads hats. Definitely uh, makes us smile when we see those photos. So rather than me ramble too much and get off topic, I want to provide information here. Um, so there was some uh, messages that were sent in today, and I kind of did a couple screenshots, and I'm going to just touch base on a couple of them before I scroll through here, because I think, actually, I, I, I left out Cedar Run Lord. So that's Blake. He's also at the shop, very experienced angler, um, great guy, full of a ton of information. Uh, he doesn't have the shop's login. Uh, if he wants it, he can have it. But um, if you message the shop, you're not going to get him. But if you message Cedar on Lures, you will. Um, shout out to someone who makes a great lure. Blake does uh, an awesome job. Anyone looking for some wood lures, metal lips, poppers, stick baits, needlefish, check out his page. I strongly suggest giving him a follow. Um, he's dialed in and makes some good stuff. I've caught a ton of fish on his, on his lures. So thank you, Blake. Um, just to check out a couple of these things here. Uh, some of these questions I, I kind of screenshot and put them on, on my computer. Um, one of these was from Jack Z. What is the strongest spinning rod you guys have? So as far as spinning rods go, I'm not sure if you're talking popping, jigging, um, what kind of gram it may be. So if, if you wanted to shoot that directly to me, um, with a little more information, I can try to do that. I don't know if you're talking, um, you know, like something to put like a Stella 20,000 on. Um, if you are, there's some grapplers that we have, some new grappler rods from Shimano. They're, they're, they're really badass. Uh, I haven't fished them, but I know from guys that were testing them, all good things to say. Uh, another another rod would be Hanta. Hanta makes some light tackle kind of jigging stuff that, that's super strong for its ability, like the sensation. Um, there's actually a, a small, quick little clip we put up on YouTube probably have on our Facebook and Instagram um, with Anthony, the um, the maker, the owner, the rep from Hanta doing a deadlift with his little slow pitch rod. I believe it was 20 pounds. It might've been 30 or more. Um, check that video out, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was a badass deadlift and those little noodle rods um, are very, very strong. So in the heavier uh, weights, say the 200, 300, 400, 500 gram rods, Hanta would definitely be at the top of the list in my opinion, in terms of quality, in terms of durability and small, um, kind of small company customer service and attention to detail, almost like you'd find in a custom rod builder. Um, if you've never heard of Hanta, I strongly suggest checking them out. They've got a wide a range of rods and they're mostly uh, outfitting anglers or making products for the jig and pop crowd. Although there are some crossover products that are, that are there. Um, so to answer that question, hopefully Hanta and, um, 
Shimano's grappler answers that. Uh, there's definitely a couple other rods we have, um, but I'm not sure exactly where you're going, so I don't want to get off topic and answer your question wrong. Um, another question that came in uh, from Joey D is, when do black drum roll in? The, the answer is now, uh, April, May, for sure. Um, do I have any tips? Yes, you will need to find clams, which is very, very difficult right now. And you're gonna wanna fish in the bay. Um, you're, you're, you can catch them off the surf, but it, it, it's, it, to me, it's not as consistent. You can really target them like that. If you, if you can, if you know somebody, pick their brain, try to learn, spend some time with them. Um, but in the bay side, um, I've seen them behind Island Beach. I've never caught them there. Uh, you can see them sometimes in the flats roaming around. Uh, but most of the time, Great Bay is, is the hot spot or down south of, of the Causeway Bridge on LBI. So the southern end of Long Beach Island, the bay side there, it can be very productive this time of year in the spring. Uh, for me, my best fishing, I don't target them very often, but I've caught a couple. My best fishing seems to be at sunset on the outgoing tide. So if you can time that up right, uh, most time it's a calmer day. I can't remember uh, having any good reports or ever personally catching drum when it's very, very rough. Uh, I think that has to do with their tendency not to kind of come up and grab a bait like a bluefish or a striper and kind of take, you know, kind of take off. Um, so hopefully that, that answers that. The, the, the rough conditions can sometimes move your line around, move the bait around, and they're, they're somewhat of a finicky eater that kind of picks and picks, and we'll see a little nibble, and then they don't just kind of commit and go. Um, so I think the rough conditions, sometimes you might not see the bites or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not an experienced drum fisherman, but hopefully those couple comments there helped you. Uh, shark bait 609 shout out to Eric. What's up, dude? Thanks for the question. Uh, my favorite car mechanic nearby, so nearby is Long Beach Island, says that you can seriously use some help right now. I would reach out to Pete, Pete P. He is in Ship Bottom. Um, he used to have a, a, an auto shop at the Getty on the outbound uh, road on 72. Uh, he has since moved to two buildings over from us, the Fisherman Tech Quarters. He's just to the east of us. So two buildings past us if you're coming on the island. Uh, LBI Auto is Pete's business. He does a great job. He's an awesome dude. Uh, he actually just fixed a tire for me on my trailer. I had, had a nail that uh, popped in the side while my tire replaced my tire. He's very reasonable, very experienced. Um, so hopefully you get your situation fixed up quick there. Um, another one here. So um, another one, Boating Max reached out and asked about a 3,000 spool, 3,000 yard spool of Cortland braid. Uh, I'll get back to you directly in, in regards to that price. Um, Another one, Sula Rose asked, one of the stripers and blues coming to LBI. So I wish I could answer that question for sure. I'm going to have to say any day. Uh, there are stripers here now. There's probably some bluefish showing up. Um, there's, we, got a, we got a message. There was a uh, fish or two caught in Raritan Bay today, some, some bigger size racers, which are like the first one to show up. Uh, so that was great news. Heard some down in Cape May. So it's kind of like you see you hear some above and below. Um, I, I think we'll see some soon. Most of the time by Mother's Day, it's kind of a period of time, a holiday that I, that I kind of gauge is for a time frame. Most of the time, Mother's, Mother's Day, they're, they're here. Um, so it should be before then. And Mother's Day is coming up. Um, sometimes they're here in early April. Sometimes it's late April. Uh, this year, we kind of had warm weather early, and then it kind of dipped back. We kind of did a little rewind, a little reset. Fishing was great. Kind of slowed up a little bit. Guys are still picking. Um, but hopefully that helps you there. Uh, the, these fish should be here soon. Um, uh, M. Lombardi. Uh, what's up, man? Thanks for the purchase of those reels the other day. I uh, appreciate the message. When do you guys plan on reopening this store? Um, so that's definitely a hard one. I, I don't know. I can't answer that. Um, I wish I could. And the easiest answer is it's unknown. Um, when I say unknown, it, 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 could be, uh, it could be a week or two. It could be a month or two. I'm not really sure. It's really going to be all dependent on the the state regulations and I guess how many local cases we have. Uh, we want to protect all of our employees and the establishment, but we also want to protect other customers. Um, so it's kind of a, a gray area. I don't really want to get too into that, but um, we're going to take it day by day. We're, we got a couple things we're, we're starting to set up now to prepare if we do open the door to foot traffic in the future. Um, I don't want to say near future because it, it's unknown. Um, so hopefully that answers that question a little bit. Um, Ronan Kearney eight asked best soft plastic swim baits for small stripers and a good jig head to pair it with. Um, I'd have to say that, that, that there's one and, and only one that sticks out as a total no brainer. When you say soft plastic swim bait, small stripers, kettle Creek, 
Um, Kettle Creeks are awesome. If you check out our fishing report, fishinglbi.com, you'll see a lot of the recent reports this season, uh, let's say in April, Kettle Creek, Kettle Creek, Kettle Creek, Kettle Creek. Um, the first striped bass that was caught off the surf this season was caught on a Kettle Creek. Um, some of the first fish that were caught in the bay by the bridges, the docks, um, on the sod banks, Kettle Creeks. Um, fish them in the inlet, fish them in the bay, uh, fish them in the ocean, off the surf, and the rocks. Kettle Creeks work. They're very, very universal. Um, if, if you had to ask me, if you're going to pick one and only one soft bait, I would pick a paddle tail. It would be either a shad-like shape, say a, a, a storm, um, kind of, or a tsunami shad, or it would be a soft bait on a jig head, like a Kettle Creek, where you have to rig it on the jig head. So then that question jumps into the next part, part two, what's the jig head? You know, what do you pair it with? Um, I would suggest looking at Magic Tail. Magic Tail makes some great jig heads. Uh, I'd be using the same exact hook as this one, which is the Black Nickel. Um, I believe this is a Mustad. I don't know the model off the top of my head, but this hook is great for light tackle fishing. It's great for rigging um, Kettle Creek's on. Now, I'm not saying this bucktail. It's, it's, there's a jig head that Magic Tail offers. Uh, it's sort of like a bullet shape, not to be confused with his heavy duty bullet uh, HD bucktail. Um, but that's what I'd rig it on. Check them out. Uh, we've got them at the shop. They are very affordable and they catch fish like no other. And shout out Magic Tails. So the Mustad hook that he uses is a 32786. Thank you for that. So anytime you want to jump on, Dante, just send an invite. I'm not sure if you know how to do it. I got a couple questions for you. Uh, if it doesn't work, doesn't work. I'll keep rambling. I'll stay on here solo. But I heard you got a haircut. I see you're in the house and we'd love to have you. You are the legend for Magic Tales. Uh, you got a lot of information. I know the current 30 followers that are here right now would love to hear about some things. I'd uh, love to talk to you. And I know whoever watches this later in the archive would also get some valuable information from you. Um, ah, be home in five minutes. The old uh, Instagram live while you're driving. A little dangerous, bro. Let's, uh, let's not do that. But <laughs> thanks for checking in. Uh, we do have a little bit of time left. So... I'll keep going with my thing and maybe Dante will jump on towards the end. Um, so please, when you, uh, when you get home, jump on. We'd love to have you. Uh, that being said, I'll get back to a couple of these questions here. Um, and Joe Ruth says, where are the stripers in the back bay? Um, I would say they're in the same place they were the last couple weeks. You could check out our, our fishing report, fishinglbi.com. And you'll see some reports on there. It shares some intel. Um, we don't really do any spot burning. I, I think it helps out anglers that have already fished the spot that um, possibly could get burned by someone else, you know, bombarding an area. And it also protects the spot and it protects the angler from kind of preventing them from always report chasing. And it tries to get them more dialed in and learning the, the who, what, when, where, why uh, kind of thing of, you know, putting the pieces together on your own fishing session. I get it. Uh, life is short. A lot of people don't have free time. Um, there's times where you know you really need that report. I really, really suggest anglers networking with one-on-one -on -one people, friends, uh, family members, neighbors for that information. Uh, I personally don't like being the um, the source of sharing information that customers are sharing with me, and kind of giving that uh, information out in a public fashion and giving away specific areas. It, it doesn't help really F fish swim. And just cause fish are somewhere on Monday does not always mean they'll be there Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Um, so that being said, to answer your question, where are the stripers and blues, uh, I'm sorry, where are the stripers in the back bay? Um, you're going to find them every year, early season, the docks, the bridges, the lights, uh, the sod banks, the flats, and that kind of covers the whole bay, right? Kind of like, oh man, he's just giving me this wild goose chase, just basically mentioning every spot in the bay you could possibly go to. So that that that, that is a valid, you know, valid comment, valid response. But let's jump into this and say, why are, why would the fish be here? Why would the fish be there? You need to go scout, you need to find bait. That's the first thing. All right. And then it's water temperature. Where's the warmest water temperature at this time? So I wouldn't suggest going to hit the inlet on the incoming tide right now unless you're looking for tog. Um, I wouldn't suggest fishing the channels and thoroughfares that are very much influenced by the inlet 
or close to him on an incoming tide right about now. Uh, what I would do is I'd fish in the deeper sections of the bay, not saying deeper in terms of depth, more of the back, back, back areas um, further away. So where we're located in Long Beach Island in Ship Bottom, right down the street is the Causeway Bridges. There's a number of them. You can fish every one of those bridges. Uh, to me, that's not a spot burn. If I said I was fishing one bridge or this side or that, that sort of gets into the spot burn thing. Um, but there's other docks. There's public docks around in all different towns in, 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 in LBI throughout the different you know areas, whether you're on the south end, the mid island, the north end. Um, there's some bay beaches that you can wait out. Uh, a lot of those are not fished as much as you would think. Um, so if you wanted to go somewhere there's no one at, you could try it, the Ship Bottom Bay Beach. Um, it's, it's very, very rarely fished. Uh, it, it's somewhat of an of a open area, so I don't consider it a, a pinpoint of that. That's where they are. But there's a nice channel. There's a good slewway. There's a sod bank. There's a shallow flat off to the one edge. Um, there's fish there. You catch weak fish there. You catch blue fish there. And you catch striped bass there. Uh, just down the, the channel from there is the bridge. There's also a public, um, public ramp uh, to put your boat in. So if you wanted to launch a boat and kind of roam around, you could launch right there. It's one block from the shop on 10th Street in the Bay. Uh, we're on 9th. And right next to that ramp, there's a public dock. You could venture out that dock. It is great early season. Uh, it's great all summer long. And it's actually good all year long, uh, whether you're crabbing, whether you're fishing, uh, or just check out the sunset. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, shout out to Jack. He's a great dude. He's always fishing, fishes hard. And he says he fished the surf today. He got one hit. Thinks it was a bass. That'd be awesome. Um, more than likely, you're fishing a lure. It wasn't a, you know, a, a dogfish or a skate. So um, I'm stoked to hear that. Uh, I can tell you there was bait on the beach up my street here. On my way to the shop, I stopped up my street. I live right by the Acme, which is sort of central, southern, um, the south central part of LBI. And there was two dolphin kind of porpoising around. I tried to get a picture and a video, and right when I started it, they disappeared and. Um, Kind of when I turned it off, sure enough, they were right in the wash, jumping around. But they were on bait. There was probably four or five birds that were just kind of roaming around. Not right where they were, sort of in the area. Um, there was a good little swell after that front pass through. The wind went offshore. Water was a little bit dirty. Uh, I'm assuming that, that you would confirm that and, and agree with me. Uh, but there was definitely some bait there, definitely some porpoise. And um, that's kind of pointing at signs that things are, are slowly progressing. Um, I would say that, that, that by May... Mid-May, the surf should be really a productive spot to fish. Uh, until then, it's definitely kind of an early thing. Um, so I really haven't been catching up or, or catching along with, you know, kind of these messages as they pop in. Uh, I see Schwag, and he's an ambassador at Fish Heads. Um, he's on it. And also I saw Max and, and, um, and also uh, Blake kind of messaging back and forth. So uh, I'm happy that those guys are interacting with you guys. Thank you. Uh, to everyone, for sure. I didn't want to kind of ramble and then not get to you or kind of do this and not get, cut, catch up on a couple other, you know, messages that were sent in. Um, also, just came in here. I saw Jack said 51 degrees off the beach, a little bit murky. So that's awesome. Um, I personally haven't had a thermometer in there to check the temp. So I'm happy to see you. You said 51. It's been a while. It was like right at that 50 kind of cusp. Um, say a week or so ago, and it just kind of never broke it. If it did, it was it was for like a short period of time, and then it dropped right back below. Um, I know a boat was out the other day. I reported it in the Fishing LBI blog um, who came across some blowfish, which is interesting. Uh, you may have seen that post that I tossed up. There are blowfish that come around early season. It's nothing that's uh, very, very extreme or out of the ordinary. It's somewhat common, but it was a little bit early. Normally, I, I think we see them in May, but some people might – go against that and say, oh no, I, I see him in April, which I'm fine with. Um, but he saw him floating up and um, it was kind of cool that he gave me one, the temperature, which he said it was right at like 48. Um, and two, he gave me that, that blowfish report. And I started talking to a couple friends and uh, one of them, Steve Perel, uh, shout out to Steve Perel, awesome captain, longtime captain, uh, writes in our fishing LBI blog. And he's also written in a number of publications, also does a lot of the uh, seminars in the wintertime. I know he does the saltwater uh, sportsman seminar in Atlantic City, and I'm sure he does a lot of other seminars too, but he's a great guy. I network with him all the time, a uh, great friend. Uh, he actually brought me some local mussels the other day. Maybe you saw that post. They were phenomenal, best mussels ever had. Prince Edward Island's got nothing on local Long Beach Island mussels, and uh, thank you, Steve. 
uh, going more in depth with this Steve, why I mentioned Steve, um, not only when this clears up to call up to go fishing to learn a little bit, he'll teach you some areas in the bay where he fishes, how he does it, and uh, maybe you can use that to advance your own personal fishing. Uh, but one of the things I want to mention is I talked to Steve about the, the blow fish, and he mentioned, you know, April wasn't out of the ordinary for him based on what he sees. Uh, and I said, you know, why are these things floating around? And he was thinking that they are coming in to the bay, uh, making their appearance for the year, and they're blown up in defense for um, so another fish can't attack them, whether it's maybe a dogfish, which is sort of like the most ruthless fish of the sea. Uh, anything that's around dogfish are going to tear up. Uh, I think they're stripe at one of the stripe bass major uh, competitors, kind of in that environment where they are somewhat sharing the same water temperatures and same times of the year in the same baits. Um, so I believe those blowfish were probably blown up and floating on the surface, um, not because anything was wrong with them. It was just the fact that they needed to stay safe. And yeah, when they're blown up on the surface, the birds are gonna pick at them potentially and, and kill them. But they'd rather take that threat or that risk. Um, then stay smaller and down in the water column where the doggies are going to destroy them. Um, obviously, striped bass love blowfish. Um, so maybe some bigger striped bass that are migrating through would also kind of potentially slurp them down too. Um, so we did get two reports from the Barnegat Bay area, uh, northern Barnegat Bay and inlet area of blowfish. And this was just a couple days ago. So I've kind of got my fingers crossed. I know there's a number of other people that got their fingers crossed that are looking forward to an awesome summer again. Uh, last summer was very good blowfish. Uh, hopefully this COVID-19 blows by and things kind of settle down um, and we can all kind of get along on Long Beach Island or really anywhere in the world and, and get out and fish and have a good time. Because um, if that's the case, a great way to enjoy the family time on the water in the summer is to go blowfishing in Barnegat Bay. Um, so if you're trying to plan something out, maybe you can't do it in the next month or so here, but if you wanted to, let's say in July or August, great time to go. Uh, keep that kind of, oops, sorry. Keep that kind of note for you. Um, so I'm just seeing some messages here. I'm kind of not dotting with them, so I don't want to dive in too deep. Um, I'll go back to these messages that I got sent in. I think I got something here that I didn't touch on yet. Um, I know people commented like they're stoked to see they're going to get Dante uh, on a couple questions, but I, I see 18 minutes left before Instagram kicks me off. And I did eight of these or seven of these so far. And the ones that I don't hit end on and Instagram ends on me, turns out I can't save them and all these problems happen. And if I can't save them, I can't archive them for future reference. So I got to end it promptly. So Dante, if you're there, bro, if you can jump on, all we need you for is a couple minutes. If not, we'll do another uh, talk about Magic Tail. Um, so Bob White, uh, mentions or questions, did the weather these past two weeks kill lure artificial bite or is it just me? Um, I would say that you, that you're onto something, um, that water slowly crept up and warmed up and, and kind of got to that prime, um, you know, it kind of got the, the, the action primed up and, and, and going. And then we kind of got a little bit of a, a chill that kind of took place. And yeah, I think those fish kind of got active got their feet on and maybe they're starting to move around a little bit more. Uh, maybe they kind of hunkered down for a little bit, but I would definitely agree the reports are flying and flying and flying and then all of a sudden it kind of quieted up. That's also due to the regulations with a lot of these tightening of um, you know access. So I'm going to kind of do two things and say it's not just um, the bites died. It, it's, it's two things because uh, there, there are definitely some fish still chewing around here locally and some anglers getting out and really having some good, good fun fishing. Um, for sure, areas outside of, say, our local territory here on Long Beach Island are firing on all cylinders, um, one of them being Raritan Bay. Um, I believe if Dante jumps on here, he's going to kind of touch base on some of his hottest products right now and say last year. Um, our plans were to talk a little bit about the Mojo craze and how Mojo is basically just a big bucktail and how they come in different sizes and you can fish them in different water depths uh, in different kind of areas and still fish that one lure very effectively for different, say, times of year. Um, a mojo can be fished in the springtime. Um, it can be fished in the summer, and it can be fished in the fall. Now, people are going to look at me like, oh, my God, you fish mojos in the spring? Well, when there's bigger fish around, yes. Uh, obviously not in the bay but for schoolies. Um, another thing would be, um, oh, 
it looks like Dante's trying to get on here. Accept it. All right, cool. So uh, let's see what I can do here. So I'd love to have Dante jump on. Uh, timeout. Technical difficulties here. Uh, that's definitely not what you guys want to see right there. Uh, that's the back of my thing here. Uh, this is a bunch of questions. Sorry about that. Um, go live with Magic Tail, Bucktails, Add Dante. Are you there, brother? Waiting for Magic Tails. Looks like they got me here. Oh, dude! Yeah. What's up, brother? How I'm in. So, I dude, thanks so much for jumping on here, brother. I got me and my little one here. Hello, hello. What's up, buddy? Sophie, say hi, Greg. Hello. <laughs> How's it going? So, I tried, dude, I'm I tried to get jump on, on like here. 15 okay. minutes ago, but you weren't accepting me. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I missed it. So it was uh, baby. Baby's upstairs sleeping. Um, so yeah, sorry about that, dude. I kind of had a little little oh, tweakage yeah, there. Yeah, a, li a little of uh, you know, kind of a little little technical difficulties. So basically, anybody doesn't know Dante is Magic Tales founder, main guy. He runs the show. Um, he's got some guys that some great employees that that make some great products. If you guys are unfamiliar with Magic Tail products, you should definitely check them out. Uh, we have basically everything he stocks at the shop. If you have any questions, reach out. But I okay. talked about a little about the bucktail, so I want to get involved with that. I wanted to ask you uh, kind of what you're seeing as some hot products right now. Kind of um, another question was something so along about the hoochies. I know there was some um, some trending kind of off with the hoochies. Hello. Uh, and I uh, wanted to kind of see what your opinion was. Why the, uh, it up over here. Oh, no. <laughs> why do you think the hoochies are so much more effective than the classic bucktail in certain applications? Um, and then kind of why you prefer, you know, them sometimes in, in, in a situation. So you kind of got the floor, dude, for 10 minutes if you want to run and ramble. Yeah, there was, there was a ton of stuff that you were talking about that I wanted to uh, say a few things. I wish we could – next time, if you want me to go on, we should probably be on the whole time. So when you say That's something, I can give, like, my advice a little too, you know. I'm all about it. So back to the bucktails. Yeah, start with something. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to go back to the bucktails. I know you were talking about the different styles and different applications about a bucktail, which is, you know, a bucktail without a doubt is the most versatile lure ever made. I mean, fishing from uh, grass shrimp in the bay with eighth ounce bucktails to, you know, 32 ounce bucktails, they're fishing for grouper and, and other fish. So, I mean, you could fish a bucktail for anything. Um, more in our area, like you said, with the bullet head and, you know, the smiling bill and, you know, there's a round head, teardrop. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we make – our main ones that we make for the fluke are the teardrop, and uh, that's my personal favorite. It's a black nickel hook. I like fishing it. There you go. Yeah. I like fishing that more on a boat. I do fish that in the bay, but – um, you know, the main thing on a bucktail is the pull point. So, you know, people always ask me, what's, what's the correct pull point? Why is this bucktail not fishing as well as the other bucktail? So um, I like a forward eye when I'm casting from the surf, okay? So a bullet head, like our bullet head actually, um, you know, it's a classic bullet head. Um, Greg actually and Blake had me go with that heavy duty hook. But if you could see how that eye on that uh, is forward, I put it forward a, a good distance um, for casting on the beach. Okay. You're bringing it back and the nose is in diving in the sand. Whereas if you take like an ultra minnow or a, a 90 degree uh, jig head, it's more for vertical jigging. So yep. that's, that's why people love, you know, a spro style bucktail, you know, fishing at 40, 60 feet, because every time you pull up, it's naturally going down because of the slope and the pull point. So, you know, there's so many different options and so many different, you know, situations for different bucktails. Um, my, I'm more of a surf guy than a boat guy for stripers. So, you know, I won't even talk about that, but from the surf, um, I love the Smiling Bill. Um, reason why I love a Smiling Bill 
is that where we fish in LBI, which is most of the time when I'm fishing, we're casting in two to six feet of water, you know, so, you know, from the beach. So I'll fish maybe like an average, anywhere half ounce, three quarter ounce bucktail, and I'm casting up on the bar and sweeping it, you know, into the little rips that we have and, you know, the fish that are sitting there. When you use more of a bullet style, it gets down, it, it gets down faster. So let's say if I'm fishing a one and a half ounce smiling bill, in my opinion, it fishes the same as a one ounce bullet head. Okay, I agree okay. with that. So the smiling bill with the lips, the, it catches the current a little bit and it comes up, it rides a little bit up, which is how more I like the bucktail because I like to almost swim the bucktail. So I'm casting it out, letting it hit the bottom, take a pop, and I'm kind of like swimming it. And as those lips catch in the rip, it kind of rises the bucktail up right into the strike zone. So, you know, that smiling bill um, for me is my favorite. Now, when I'm fishing, say, an inlet with deeper water, I like the bullet head. I feel the bullet head gets down a little more. You know, it's, it's all preference. Um, okay. You know, unfortunately nowadays we don't have the class of fish that we had years back so i don't need to fish a bullet head or any heavy hook like greg said i'm fishing a teardrop you know early spring early fall i'm fishing a half ounce three-quarter teardrop on a light eight foot rod 20 pound braid 30 pound leader you know casting out you know and and there's not much you can't land on that you know even though it is a black nickel hook i wouldn't say go you know target 30 40 pound stripers on it but you know those schoolies that we catch up to 15 pounds you know you should have no problem with so i got a quick one here nick uh just mentioned in here he's like what's the retrieve like from the surf with a smiling bill so i think people aren't really informed with how to fish a bucktail you know cast it out blake cedar on lord just said slow but maybe you can just give it a, a a minute on that yeah i mean i think there's no wrong way to fish a bucktail, to be honest with you. That's why a bucktail is so easy to fish. Because, you know, you could catch fish on the bottom. You can catch fish on the surface. So when you're casting a bucktail, you know, I let it cast and let it sit. And I take a pop. And then I kind of just reel in. And naturally, I just take, a, you know, a, you know, every 30 seconds, I'll pop the rod. It'll move a little bit. You know, and then once you get into that strike zone, you know, uh, hopefully you get a bite. Now, the most important part of, say, why I fish mega shads or, and bucktails versus plugs is it's all about the time in the strike zone, okay? When you're fishing a plug, your time in the correct strike zone for big fish is very limited. So whereas a bucktail, you could fish a bucktail or a lead head or something like a big shad from the time you cast almost to your feet. Yeah. You know? So. A bucktail should be in every single person's arsenal, you know, and, you know, believe it or not, you know, I'm towards the tail end of my striper career, but, you know, I just started really fishing a bucktail on the beach probably the last four or five years in LBI locally, you know, I was always plugging, but, you know, I thought you needed more structure oriented to fish a bucktail and I was completely wrong because yeah. bucktail works great in the sand as well. You know, again, you're always looking for a subtle structure, whether it's a drop off or a bar, but that's any roar you want to fish. You know, that's where the bass are staging up. Cool. So, you know, different situations. I'm a big Smiling Bill fan. I do fish the bullet. Um, you know, there's the teardrop I fish, fluke fishing. Teardrop's my number one favorite. It, I don't do as much fluking in the, uh, in the ocean as I like to anymore. Uh, but I like that ultra minnow style head. And that's actually why this year, okay. um, as far as the hoochies, I'll move on to the hoochies. Which yeah, is, yeah, please. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, I want to move on to the hoochies real quick. I know we, we don't have a lot of time, but. You got five minutes. I started two years ago with the rubber skirts. Actually, I lied. I started four years ago with the rubber skirts. It didn't take off. Nobody liked it. I was getting uh, these skirts from someone over here. They were a little thicker. They weren't great. Hmm. Two years ago, I actually um, talked to Jig and World and had them create that skirt, which I use now. Um, it's an awesome skirt. Um, it slides right up over the 
um, the collar. It's a little more expensive than the average skirts, you know, but uh, in my opinion, it's, it's pretty sturdy. So when you take fluke fishing, for example, I do a lot of back bay fluke fishing in, you know, four to 10 feet of water. Yeah. The rubber skirts is all I fish now. I don't even fish bucktails anymore because the action of the rubber skirt in the water far precedes anything that, you know, the, the bucktails can do. So cool. I've been fishing, you know, three eighths to an ounce in the bay and it's just been phenomenal. So um, this year, what we did, obviously, um, I do have about a hundred tackle shops I deal with on the East coast. Um, Greg at Fisherman's headquarters, that is my, my main shot. You know, Greg and I have been friends probably 15 years before, well before I ever started uh, the bucktail business. So uh, he has all of my products, um, stuff now that nobody else has. And it's, uh, he's always going to have everything we do first, obviously. Um, he's more like the Magic Tail headquarters, per se. Um, you could always talk to Greg, Max. Uh, as far as bucktailing, uh, Blake, um, I know he doesn't like talking to people too much, but <laughs> if you can get him. Blake's uh, one of my fishing partners, phenomenal fisherman, uh, knows uh, that inlet and that bucktailing as well as anybody. So he's a great person to talk to. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, Max. Max is always great to talk to about, uh, you know, getting you the product. But uh, those teardrops is my favorite for the bay and the hoochies. And uh, this year we made the ultra minnows. The only shop actually that has them now in every single color is Fisherman's Headquarters. Um, I think they have six of every size and every color. Uh, but uh, again, yeah, Maxi, man, I, I know Max was just getting them on the wall here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good. You know, within a day or two, we can get anything else out. Um, and then the last quick thing, you know, next well, time. One, one of the things here, man, I, we, got, we got some people messaging, calling. They want us to go. They want to end this, and they want us to jump back on here. And they, they want you to keep talking. Uh, so, I'll talk all night. Come well, then, we, then maybe, maybe we can jump back on. Because, I mean, we got like two minutes, and I'd rather just log off and save it so we can archive it. So anybody listening, if you guys want to talk Magitail products, maybe not Magitail, maybe it's fishing, maybe it's bucktails, you got questions. Maybe we start talking a little more about hoochies, fluke fishing, tog fishing. We still got a couple more days of tog left. Um, obviously, dude, you're dotted with tuna. Maybe we don't get involved in all that. That Maybe we save that for a later date. Um, but I would like to talk about kind of what you see as trending with, you know, the 100 shops you supply, you know, what people need to know. Like, you know, you might walk into one shop and they have a couple of these products. You walk into another shop and a couple of those. But you see what all the shops around are selling. And you can kind of share and say, hey, these are my hot products. This is what's really moving. Guys are fishing this. Guys are fishing that. This is what's been trending, say, the last year or two. This is what's really trending this year. This is what's moving, and it's happening. So if yep. you're cool with doing that, I'm going to log yeah. off right now. Let's, uh, let's uh, start one over, obviously, cool. because the more scotch I drink, the more I could talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So I'm going to log off right now. Thanks, everybody, for jumping on. Uh, please stay tuned. It'll be a minute, two minutes, and we'll, we'll be back up and rolling. Thanks, maybe, guys. maybe we even get the uh, – the boss of Magic Tales on for a minute. What do you think, honey? Right. There we go. She makes the magic happen. She actually, believe it or not, she was, she tied every mojo and every bucktail for the first three years. That's saying something right there. You know, you <laughs> fish that caught? That was her thousands and thousands, if Absolutely. not. Now. She's still the best. Yeah. But the problem is she had too many kids. Uh-oh. You know, so. No, no, no now you got to take over. All right, no, I'm going to no. jump off. We'll be back in a second. Say bye, honey. Chat, <laughs> say goodbye. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs>